What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. As you can see here we have a very creepy creepy creature. A um, little story about him. This weekend I went over to m one of my favorite flea markets. That's really really huge. It's more like a farmer's market kind of thing. Um, <coughs> hoping to find something, you know, cool because I usually do there that's where I've gotten a lot of my figures from for really really cheap uh, for instance like the $4 um, spider hulk <laughs> so that's that's just one of them but there's been a couple of great hauls that I've had there turns out uh, I went on Saturday Saturday is their slow day um, not many people there mostly all like the people that sell sunglasses and perfume and knockoff clothing and just just the people that aren't selling their old junk which I really really go there for <clears throat> so anyway on my way home after not finding anything uh, I saw that someone was having a yard sale on the side of the road pulled over and uh, didn't see much so I started to walk away and I saw a bucket of Star Wars stuff. Most of it was broken and really dirty and not useful for me because I'm not really a big Star Wars person. There was like an at, -AT in there but it was really 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 destroyed. Uh, missing a bunch of pieces and a Millennium Falcon that was miss missing a bunch of pieces and um, maybe some of you Star Wars guys right now are saying like you're an idiot should have bought it but um, the kid won it like 40 bucks for the whole bucket um, but I really just wanted this guy. Uh, so I got him for five bucks, which is, you know, five dollars for a really cool figure. Don't care where it's from, looks neat. Uh, I, I'm sold, you know. That's really cheap to me. And like you can see how big this thing is compared to my hands. So it's a pretty big figure. But the problem was that he was covered in dirt and soot and like grossness. He was just like if he was left in a bucket of dirt in the garage or something like that so he's really dirty should have showed you beforehand but uh, I got home and I cleaned him up really nice with um, some soap first and then I soaked him in a cleaner in a bucket for maybe a half hour or so so I, I cleaned him up really nice and <clears throat> save your old toothbrushes these are two old toothbrushes that I've had um, these really help with cleaning your figures and I, I recommend this just for any figure like whether you get it in a trade and it smells like cigarettes or uh, the person didn't take good care of it you can seriously just this works really well and it's you don't have to go out and buy something to clean it so it makes it easier and just some non-scented um, you know soap nothing too fancy so um, so I cleaned him up, came out really good, um, considering painting him because he does have a lot of paint chip around him. He has a little gimmick where you press down on the back of his head and his mouth opens. There's like another little gimmick over here where you move this and kind of a claw thing opens. Uh, fairly articulated. All these go up and down. Um, some all these go up and down some of these are facing it different ways like it can only go left and right not up and down it can twist but it, it can only go left and right and this one can only go up and down so that's pretty cool um, the neck is molded but it looks really cool so that's okay and this thing kind of moves I don't know if it's supposed to but as you can see there's some paint chipping on that um, I was considering making him into like a brood because he's very uh, reminiscent of a brood, but I might not do that. Just want to paint him my own kind of way. I don't know exactly what I want to do just yet. So if you guys have any ideas on color schemes or whatever, just you know comment it, and maybe I'll take some of that into consideration. Because he's very spider-like, but also dragon-like, and he's got three eyes. 
So I was thinking about doing like the glowing eyes, of course. Um, oh, almost forgot. Uh, this is something I don't think the kid knew or whoever the previous owner of this figure was. Um, I was kind of messing around with them and I saw like there's a seam here and I thought maybe it was a battery compartment. You know, maybe he makes noise when you do this or something. Well, it turns out that it actually has a chest piece that comes off and there's a little bit of a kind of like bones looking in things in there. And you pull this out and it's it's guts. It's still in the bag, so I don't think they knew about this. It's like an you know squishy kind of organ thing. So I thought that was pretty cool that that was still in there. And uh, you can see kind of the inner workings of it. But I thought that was really really neat to uh to actually have this little feature it made me like the figure even more once I found this out so really cool figure um, I think its name is like Ak something like Akte or Aktar or something it's it's a the thing that um who is Obi-Wan that fights in the in the Coliseum and there's that cat lizard and then that other like I don't know lizard bowl looking thing hey guys i want to show you this game that i picked up from ollie's you know one of my favorite places to go um i got it for only ten dollars so it's a pretty good deal um it's a psp game i don't really play my psp often um but i really wanted something to just kind of mess around with when i'm bored or whatever or you know maybe like you know vacation or something like that but um this is what it looks like i've never seen the game before until i got there so i kind of just was browsing around and came across it and i thought it looked kind of neat because it has to do with monsters and fighting and you know i figured it couldn't be too far from pokemon and all those other kind of games so um if you haven't played this before then I guess you'll find out what it's about. Apparently this is the second one. There's one that, that has come out before um, this one. I've never played it, never heard of it, like I said, so who knows. And plus the tiger thingy kind of looks cool and then whatever that gremlin looking thingy in the background is. Um, so w what I've played with this thing is pretty, pretty cool so far. It comes with this um, kind of card like I want to say it's like a plastic, like a really tough plastic card with a design on it. And what you do is you'll lay it out. And I have the game right here running. Um, it comes with a camera, which is really cool. So you can even use this for just taking pictures. $10 for a little camera to attach to your, to your PSP is really cool. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm supposed to be joining this tournament kind of thingy and I just literally started playing the sabotage person's me and then whoever Tossin or whatever but this is uh, I'm gonna show you the most important thing it's um some of this is real life and then some of it is animated like they have people that talk to you um, and tell you how to use your PSP for this and um, what the whole theme behind the, the um, game is. So it's pretty much an adventure game where you find um, animals that are in hidden spots. And this will pretty much show you, this um, battle will show you what it, you know, what it is really. Let's see, we might have to line this up a little bit better. Okay, so this is where I would pick my animal kind of thingy. Um, I'm going to be versed in this kind of, I don't know what you would call it, like a, it's a fire type thingy. And then this guy, this dragon looking guy over here is a ground, I believe that's the ground symbol. So they go by types just like Pokemon does. And I have a, I don't have too long to pick. We'll just pick him 
just because. So I'm going to pick him. And then you can sometimes pick power-ups, like a healing power-up. Alright, so see, now it's telling me to look at the trap, which is that card thing they call it a trap. So... Kind of missed, missed it, but you can see that the um, creatures appear on my desktop. But there's my hand. Uh, it's kind, it's kind of neat. Um, you can fight and you can block. Um, I just kind of broke him and then I attacked him, or uh, blocked him and then attacked him. Uh, it's kind of... There we go. It, sometimes, every now and then, it, it'll go out of whack like that. It'll, um... Sorry, I'm concentrating. It'll, um... It'll think that... I blocked my attack. It, it'll think that you're moving around too much, so it, it'll just kind of distort the image. But you, the main idea here is to pay attention to the trap and kind of lock your um, your camera onto it. Oh man, I, my stamina. See, my stamina goes down, so I have to wait to attack now. And I kind of got to get either hit by the attack or block it. And if I don't have enough stamina to block. Then I can't block anything. See, he just blocked me. But it's really cool. Like, it's really fun. Um, I think it's neat how you... I'm going to let my stamina rack up in the meantime. I think it's neat how it like point you know you use the camera and it's like they appear like they're 3D. Ah, he's blocking the whole time. I thought he was gonna let go. So this is pretty much the main. Um, I guess the main thing about it. There's another. There's another thing that you can do with it where you'll try to find these monsters right and it'll tell you to look at a certain color surface and you use a flat surface usually uh, he regained his life you'll look at a, um, a certain color surface it'll ask and use the use the trap or uh, yeah it'll like detect a uh, creature like say you're just like looking around it'll detect a creature kind of like a um, um uh, what are they called trying to think of the name uh, like a minesweeper kind of thing or a metal detector that's that's really what I was looking to say um and it'll beep it'll and until it finds a um, until it finds a creature and then you'll get the trap out and put the trap in the place where it found you know the creature and then that's there's like a little game like a mini game that you have to play to catch the creature so it's pretty fun, like, I mean, it's definitely worth $10, it's it's entertaining, it's kind of repetitive so far, but I've only been playing this for maybe like 15, 20 minutes total. I'm gonna wait till this guy stops blocking. I just wanna show you guys kinda of like what it looks like when you win. Hmm, that didn't do much damage, huh? Ah, he blocked. Hmm. I wonder what my main attack will do on him. Nothing. Oh, wait. No, it got him before he blocked. So you see that he kind of like fell over and died, kind of. And you can zoom in on them. 
and Ready? it'll show them like like if they're really there so really really cool um it's fun to catch them because each creature has a different um, way to ca that you can catch them and um, each creature does something specific so check this out it's pretty cool invisibles I think you can battle online too uh, I don't know much about it but maybe I will uh, show this in the next couple episodes and see how far we got because this took up a lot of time so thank you guys for sitting through that so here we have some tools um, got these I believe from Ollie's yeah and I thought maybe I show you guys some cool tools to to help you w with customizing or help you help you with um, uh, diorama building or you know anything like that uh, this one is pretty much a razor knife that has a handle um, this helps me a lot for precision um, not it's not necessarily uh, something you need I like to use things like this for when I'm trying to cut like a big surface this is mostly I would use this mostly for foam you know nothing really all that serious um, I think yeah they they store it with the blade turned around in it and I believe it has yeah has blade storage in here so comes with extra blades a lot of um a lot of tools have storage in their handles, so check all your tools if you think you run out of blades or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how this one works. Okay, so you just lift that up. So it has a safety feature where you can turn it around. A lot of um, razors, they store, or they, they're just like this, and you can't you know, flip them around and store the blade in the opposite way, which is really cool. So I, I like this, and it's good for holding on and being able to cut something, especially when you're cutting something that's really strong. It's a lot easier than just holding this razor blade or using a utility knife. So um, that's why I got this. This might help some of you guys out for cutting things like foam and all that, but um, be very, very careful because these things are super sharp and they will cut your fingers off if uh, or cut you if you can, you know, if you put yourself in that situation. And I re recommend anybody under the age of 18 to have a parent or a guardian or, you know, just someone to help you out. And I know it sounds kind of silly, uh, anybody who might be watching this, but it's, it's very serious. Uh, I, I really don't recommend anybody using any um, chemicals or um, sharp objects or razor blades, or not razor blades, I, um, or f anything with fire. Um, by themselves. You should always have a spotter. I, I, I say that for anybody. Um, most of the time I have either my friend or my girlfriend here to to kind of just make sure that I don't hurt myself. So I, re I recommend that. So this is a this is not a ne necessary tool but um, it will help me out. But one thing I do recommend for you guys to get is something like this. Um, it's a retractable, you know, snap-off knife, razor blade. Um, these both were only three dollars, and that's pretty cheap. Cause at uh, Home Depot and everywhere else, it's like six bucks for something like this. Um, the reason why I recommend one of these is one, it's it's really easy to use. It's retractable. This has a nice grippy handle. Um, as you can see there's some edges in here that you can literally just break this off if something happens to the corner so you, you always have a nice new razor blade and these kinds of knives other than um, a, like a, a utility knife or you know retra another retractable razor blade is this helps you with carving corners and stuff for your foam so you can you know get in like a wave or you know if you need to cut a bigger area you can just extend this out so another recommended tool and I believe you can 
replace oh it does have extra blades which is cool so you can see right there and then you can uh, also replace this blade from opening up this section so did I yeah I did put the back on wrong so really cool um, another really cool thing is this these little um, sanding pads it's um, really thin foam I want to say it's like quarter inch foam with uh, sandpaper on it and most people will probably be like you know that's really silly to buy that when I can just use sandpaper or whatever well the reason why I like this is because one it has some give to it and two because I can hold on to it um, when I'm sanding something I, I'd like for the sponge or we're just gonna call this a sponge to take the shape of the thing I'm sanding and paper can do that but this has like I said some softness to it that the impression of whatever I'm sanding will you know go into it and then I can sand it and it's also pre preventing me from um, jacking up my fingers because when I sand with sandpaper sometimes you hurt your fingers so I got two of these these were only 99 cents uh, I know that seems a little much for just two pieces of little sandpaper but um, it's worth it to me I'll get some good use out of them so some other little things that you can use for customizing or you know creativity um, this is all from Walmart so you can find this very easily um, mostly everybody has a Walmart um, first off I'll show you this Mod Podge stuff if you don't know what this is this is pretty much a sealant um, it tends to turn <clears throat> anything into a plastic like um, texture I guess I guess you can call that um, it says right there in the small print that you probably cannot read water based sealer glue and finish um, isolate I don't speak Spanish I believe I just started to read that in Spanish so um, you can use this for glue it works very well as a glue um, but you don't it's not necessary because sometimes these can be expensive depending on where you get them from Walmart is the cheapest place so far I can't remember how much I paid maybe three dollars um, but um, yeah I you can use this on all kinds of things I don't necessarily recommend using it on figures uh, just because it can uh, rub off can chip off and if you have um, a figure that you sealed with this in a warm area it'll stay kind of tacky um, not like tacky like like sticky more like you can feel the sealant on it you know it doesn't kind of become one with the plastic <clears throat> But this is good for little things like weapons that you've painted. Like, um, it would be good for my little canister that I paint it because it's not something I'm going to use all the time. Um, it's good for dios if you want to seal up your dio. You would water this down and mix it with, um, you know, mix it with water, like I said, and then put it in a spray bottle and spray it onto your dio. Or you can paint it on. You can do it anything you want. It's, it's thick like glue too it's just like Elmer's glue almost uh, consistency wise so I I do recommend using this this is the matte finish it comes in matte and uh, gloss and like a hundred different kinds of finishes so um, I do recommend that everybody even even if you don't do customs I do recommend that you just have this it's good for all kinds of things like I said um, like you can even turn fabric into plastic by using this uh, it will s soak into it and make it hard and pretty much become a plastic uh, and it's water based so it's easy to clean up um, cheap pack of brushes these are Walmart plaid brand brushes good for precision 
and stuff like that. I, I, uh, I would say you don't want to use your really expensive paints with these. You probably want to use, you know, your cheaper, uh, like, yeah, 99 cent or whatever these are, paints. And, um, you know, I won't, re I don't recommend stuff like this for figures. This is more like for dios or whatever you're using. Just not something that's going to be very detailed and very, uh, or like hands on, something that you're going to be handling a lot. And, um, don't waste your expensive brushes on dios and stuff. So get yourself some cheap little brushes that can do details. That's what this is for. And I don't know why, but I grabbed these. These are kind of cool, colorful brushes. Pretty much for the same thing. They're kids' brushes. They're cheap. Don't waste your expensive brushes on um, little things, you know. All right, guys. So that's about it. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff that we're going to use for dios and customs and stuff like that. And if you have any questions, you can... You know, leave me comments or add me on Facebook to ask me anything. Um, I am willing to give some people pointers and stuff like that on how I do things. It's not necessarily how everybody else does it, but the way that I do it. So don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And you know, add me on Facebook, like I said. Follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, have a good one.